Oh, good evening. Hi. I'm listening to the radio. But not with headphones anymore. Listen. Manchester United's FA Cup defeat by Swansea on Sunday. United are back in action this evening. They play Sunderland in the first leg of their League Cup semi. Yes, we decided uh, we ought to have, uh, after finishing part five yesterday, we thought we should have a jolly good go and do part six the next day, and then it's all finished. And um, the final step, of course, is to dispense with the headphones. And here it is. Here is our loudspeaker. It's an SG Brown, that's a very good company, model H1, and they uh, date... Uh, they were made in the 1920s and probably carried on being made for some time. Really, it's almost like a very powerful headphone, um, you know, with a much stronger magnet mounted on a base with an amplifying horn. Uh, but it does work. Yes, the uh, our radio enthusiast from the 1920s, whose history we've been following, I can only conclude he must have had a large bonus at work. Uh, to have the money to go out and buy one of those um, because they were expensive, everything was expensive about radio in the, those days, it was brand new technology. We only had broadcasting in the UK from 1923, so for the first 10 years, you know, it was all, you know, cutting edge, well, it was cutting edge technology and expensive. Um, and of course, uh, where is the power to come from to drive this speaker? Our one valve set will drive head, tiny headphones, all right, but what about this big speaker? Yes, we've got a new valve, and it's, a, it's made by a company called Listen. They're type P225, which is around in the probably the late 20s, early 30s. And it's, um, it's not a triode, it's a pentode, which is, uh, I'm getting a bit out of my depth on the theory of pentodes, but it was the latest thing for um, audio amplification uh, to drive a loudspeaker. And uh, you'll notice that uh, the, the triode valves only had four pins because they only had, uh, you know, two pins for the filament, one for the grid and one for the anode. So when they had added other electrodes, of course, you know, they'd run out of pins, which <laughs> they added more pins later. But in this particular one, there's a little, um, the extra screen grid is brought out to a little terminal on the side of the base, which I think is extremely cute. And uh, I really like it. Uh, well, this new expensive pentode valve, it must have cost over a pound, perhaps even one pound, uh, ten shillings, you know. I mean, a huge amount of money. Um, it obviously went on the end of our, of our circuit, so we'd better take a look at the new circuit. Uh, well, here it is. And um, the pentode valve has literally been added onto the end. Instead of the headphones above the triode, we've now got a resistor which acts as a load. Uh, then next we've got a fixed capacitor which allows the audio signal to go through to the grid of the pentode um, but it doesn't allow the DC, the high tension, to get through because DC can't flow through a capacitor. But alternating currents, alternating voltages such as those of speech and music can actually go through a capacitor, go into the grid and be amplified. And in the anode of the pentode is our loudspeaker which has a coil and some iron like an iron diaphragm and a horn which I've drawn rather crudely I'm afraid um, but it does work. I've taken the valves out and this is the resistor which acts as a load in the anode of the triode valve but from the anode of the triode valve is a wire which leads to a capacitor which will keep the DC, keep the high tension out but allow the uh, audio frequencies through into the grid of the pentode. This uh, little gizmo here is the same as that one. That's just to reduce the voltage from the computer power supply from 3.3 volts to 2 volts, which is what the filament of both these valves requires. Um, now, we've got a separate power supply which drives, through, drives a speaker and returns to this point here um, and it then goes into the anode of the valve and this loose lead here uh, is the uh, terminal which fastens on to the little um, pillar terminal on the valve base. So really it isn't very different at all. Um, but we do get more gain. 
Um, I've got all the variable capacitors at minimum, so let's tune in a station um, and we'll start down this end, that's the lower frequency end of the medium wave, increase coupling, now tune around for a station, I know it's broadcasting football. There it is, now we'll increase the, the reaction to bring the volume up. Then you have to tune it in again because the controls are interactive. There we are. It's quite uh, loud enough to listen to. Um, and the music in the background is because there is music in the background of nearly everything these days. And I've tuned in a station which is doing speech, or at least it was, and I've tuned it in. And I shall now bring it in by uh, coupling. Well, there's certainly plenty of volume there. Well, for once, a nice short video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, end of series. Um, and mind you, I've also had a problem with contemporary music, uh, which is not really my scene, coming out of that old 1920s equipment. It sounds slightly odd. Um, I mean, if you listen to something such as our late 1920s radio enthusiasts uh, might have heard, uh, in say 1924 25, which is when uh, this speaker I think was current, um, it would probably have sounded something like this. What a lovely mellow sound the Savoy Havana band has in 1924. Um, it's ironic of course that at that time uh, records were still made by the mechanical process but they were listened to on radios with electrical speakers, one of those fascinating interfaces of technology. Um, and unfortunately no it wasn't tuned in on our radio, alas no, uh, I, I used a card, I teased you by using this old output transformer from a Philips tape recorder and I fed a low impedance speaker uh, into the secondary and then from the primary uh, drove the old loudspeaker so uh, but it was it's fun anyway uh, hope you enjoyed these videos and wishing you all the best for 2014 bye now